Welcome. We're going to try lesson two today. Still on free candy. We'll start off by reviewing some games and then we'll see if we can figure out how to actually have maybe a game against one of our viewers. Always learning, trying to figure this all, all this stuff out. So this game, let's see, let's start off with, uh, we had games yesterday for, against two, two different clubs played games. So it's kind of an opportunity for us to see how they played. Uh, these two players were 13, 13, uh, 83 and 1523, black being the higher rated player, uh, both young and new to the game, basically, as far as, as getting actual education and training in the game. So it's, it's still a learning process for them. And we're going to see how well they did with free candy sitting around. I'm going to try to include your chats in the window under where it says the chess cat. So feel free to chat whenever you like, and then hopefully I'll see it and we'll figure out how I can respond. Like I said, I'm still learning. This is our fourth attempt, but our second lesson. And this lesson would I would say is the second, the first one was actually the last one. Sorry, the third overall one was good enough to keep, so we did. So I can see in my board already a little bit that I'd like it to be a little bit better centered, um, but that's not the way to do it. Uh, I'm missing a little bit off the top. So I'll have to edit that. Actually, I'm gonna try it real quick. Let's see how fast I can actually edit things too. Cause that's, that's part of the game to know how to do. I'm gonna change my cropping just a little bit vertically. And we're going to see if it'll keep it, save it, and uh, press on. Trying that out. Let's see. Crop again, possibly. And I should be good to go, I hope. Go back to main. See if it holds it. And I don't know. So waiting for a save. I don't see a save come up either. I'll try moving around a little bit more and see if it likes that better. And see if we can get it to say, yes, you have saved. You are good to go. Let's go. Let's go. We're done. Done changing. And no, it didn't, it didn't like to keep it. If I stretch it, that's not going to do it. All right. We're only, we're only missing a little tiny bit. So we'll leave it as is for now. I will definitely adjust it before the next lesson, which, by the way, is Friday at 8 o'clock. I know it's Christmas, but we do Christmas in the mornings. I'm trying to get on a schedule. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So Friday, I'm going to do it, even though it's Christmas Day, and we'll do it at 8 o'clock. All right, so this game is, like I said, between two players, 1383 uh, and a 1523, 1523 having the black pieces. Oh, I see a chat every actually come in, and it looks like I have a good morning. Good morning to you. I got to get better at uh, seeing these. I there we go. That works for me. Uh, it's good enough. Thanks, thanks. Uh, let's go through this game. So these are two of my students. One is an adult. One is a a teenager, teenage girl, and she's actually the younger of. I mean, she's the stronger rated right now, and she ends up winning the game. Uh, you know. Spoiler alert, sorry, too late. But let's go through it, and I have not seen this game yet. So you can help me make sure that I identify all the free candy, because I might miss free candy. So we see, starting off with E4, as I mentioned in the first lesson, I tried to get my students, when they're very much just starting out, to focus on just moving the two center pawns, not moving wing pawns, not moving the A and the H pawn, sticking to the two center pawns unless provoked, unless they have a good reason, and developing their pieces. So remember, that was our major lessons. And we just recently took a step back because I realized that really what the problem for most of them wasn't with the development anymore, but their problem was that they were leaving free candy, giving away free candy, gifting, as my daughter likes to say, giving tribute to other people with free candy. And not taking it when the tribute was offered. So let's see what happens. E4, E5, my students are playing well, and we have a Vienna game. Again, don't worry about it. They don't have to know the names. They're not studying openings per se. 
but both are developing their pieces. There are no free candy. Uh, part of the part of the functionality of the Vienna is that we're not actually attacking. So usually if you started with this knight, you would have created free candy here, a threat, but there is no threat. There's no free candy. Reminder, this is all about free candy and free candy means having a piece that is attacked more times than it's defended. And the most common way we see it is where the piece is attacked once and not defended at all. Do you have to take free candy? No. I encourage my students to take it all the time because they need to see it. Once they get used to taking it every time it's offered, then they will learn more about when to take, when not to take, when it might be a trick, when it might be a gambit, when the sacrifice might not be worth uh, grabbing. We'll get there. All right. So a reminder also that when you attack a piece, and white is now attacking this pawn, making this now free candy, there are four ways to get out of being attacked. I said it last time. I'll say it again. It's worth saying. You could take the piece that's attacking you. The black could take back. You can move the piece. This pawn can't move. There's a pawn in its way. But if that pawn wasn't there, it could run away. It can be protected. So you can take a piece and protect it. Or you can attack something of greater value. And right now there is nothing that black can attack of greater value. So right now this is free candy and black should respond. This is, by the way, a gambit because I should also mark this one. This one is also not protected. So black can take. So both of these are right now considered free candy, but it's black's turn. So will black take advantage of the free candy? Black does. Black takes the pawn and we no longer have free candy on the board and black is up one point. We went over that last time. The values of the pieces, pawns are worth one. So white pushes, nice, right? Aggressive, moving along. Uh, we're not talking about should he have developed pieces, right? Which is normal when you, um, in the opening, we wanna develop more than we wanna push pawns, but we're not getting into that part of the game right now. We're just talking about free candy. And is this free candy? No, that's not free candy, but it is threatening to win the exchange, a pawn for a knight. This knight is protected by the queen. It's protected by the pawn. So it's not free, but it's not a trade black should like because he would be losing the exchange. And the exchange rate, understanding when a piece is worth more than the other piece, is something that beginners have trouble with and miss. So we'll mark that one as being the exchange, losing the exchange. So black decides to move away, run away. Black again could have, can't take the pawn, could have pinned the pawn by putting the queen here, and then the pawn couldn't take. So that would be a counter move, not really an attack, really not uh, attacking something of greater value, but that would be good. Uh, but running away is definitely an option. And black could have ran forward, but couldn't go here. The knight would take him off. Wouldn't go here. That would be free candy. So really couldn't go here. That would have been free candy. Couldn't go here. That would be free candy. So I take it back. Black actually couldn't run forward. Black had to back up or pin the pawn. That would have been logical. But black chose to run away. We're still okay. Black did not leave free candy on the board. That's all we're worried about. Is there free candy? Um, white develops. Black says, ha, this is not free candy, right? Because it's protected. Attacked once, protected once. So it's just a threat of a trade. This is not free candy. It's protected three times. So no free candy was just established. No threat of free candy, but we did develop a piece. All right. So white ignores this. White ignores this and decides to go ahead and protect the pawn a second time. Overprotection, we call it. Okay. Again, we're not judging moves for strategy or even tactics. We are only judging free candy, paying attention to free candy. So now this pawn is attacked twice by the pawn and by the knight. Still not free candy because it's protected twice. So we're still equal, no problems. No free candy on the board that I see. White now moves the queen. And again, we're not going to talk about the fact that it's blocking his own bishop. 
but he does put it on the same um, line as the king. So that's okay. Again, we're not worried about how you're developing. I would have rather have seen this bishop out here or here or even here. I'd rather see this bishop get developed first. I'd rather see this bishop take this pawn first. But I am happy to for the fact of no free candy. That's what we're focusing on, free candy. Bishop comes out, threatens the knight. Now, that knight is pinned to the queen. It is not an absolute pin. So this knight is still technically protecting the pawn. But logically, we have two attacking, and now we have three protecting. So that's still okay, even with the bishop pinning. And this pawn is attacked once and protected once. So it looks like if black were to take this knight, no matter which way white takes back, black could win this pawn because there's only one protector. And that's a little advanced. Just thought I'd throw it in. Can't help myself. The bane of teaching. So again, this pawn can still be free. It is not free at the time. So obviously we missed a free um, piece and nobody pointed it out to me. So at this point, this pawn became free candy. This discovered the attack on the pawn, which by the way, beginners miss all the time. Discovered attacks of any kind are highly missed by beginners. So we, well, we, you're supposed to help me. I missed it. I'm going to say you missed it too. This was free candy. We missed it that move. It was free candy this move. It was still free candy this move. And it's still free candy. So black did nothing to try to protect the pawn, which is okay. If black realizes it's free candy and decides to let white have it, that is fine. If black doesn't realize it's free candy and, decide, and didn't realize that he could have protected this way, um, or she could have protected that way, then that's bad, right? So it's it's all about, did you recognize the free candy? Okay, so we missed it. It was free candy there for a while. So white takes now, and it's looking good. And uh, back to my what I've been teaching them, white is a, way ahead in development, four pieces developed, ready to castle queen side if that's what he chooses to do. And black only has two pieces developed. So white's gambit, giving away a pawn, the purpose of getting faster development is working. So, but that's a side note, right? And so here we have the threat of this pawn falling away. Remember, that was a threat. And it looks like um, black realizes it and is going to win a pawn. So now with this take, this bishop is free candy. Okay, that's a threat. Uh, threatening to win the exchange here. And this pawn became free candy. Complicated, but all these things just happened. This pawn is now free. Nothing's attacking it. Nothing's protecting it. The knight's attacking it. This bishop is now free. Uh, two pieces are attacking it. Nothing's defending it. And if we don't do something, the bishop could take our queen and win the exchange. So white should notice that, yes, his pawn is free candy, but more importantly, the queen is hanging to the exchange and should, of course, protect the queen or do something about the queen. And we said the other day, out of the four things you could do when attacked, the best one is normally, not always, but normally taking a piece that's attacking you. So white could take the bishop and white does, figuring, hey, I might lose a pawn, but I'll keep my queen. That's always a better thing. So black doesn't take this pawn, which is interesting, right? So let's double check. We have two pieces attacking here. We have two pieces protecting here. So that's not free candy. So black did not take the free candy, which is here now. This uh, is not, we already marked this, right? Yes, I lost my markings. Sorry about that. All right, so that's free candy at the moment. Black is still free candy. Black might want to take that free candy. By the way, I'm not in an analysis, board, in a study. That's why it's not holding my markings. I just realized if I go back, it won't be there anymore. But that's okay. We don't need to hold the markings. So this is free candy. Black had an opportunity to take that free candy. Maybe black should have. Now let's just double check if this is free candy. We have one, the x-ray two, but no, we still have three pieces protecting it. So yes, the only free candy was here. Black should have taken the free candy. And this is exactly what we're talking about learning that what should I do, when should I do it? Black should have taken, and if black had taken here, now the queen is under attack and we're threatening a fork. So we have, um, I'm sorry, this would be the exchange. So we're attacking the queen and we're threatening a fork. 
Now, queen, oh, look, we have free candy over here. And this one is not free candy. So uh, white could then mistakenly take the free candy here and then fall for this um, fork and lose the rook for the knight. Or white could bring the queen over, protect the pawn, and attack the knight. Could bring his queen here, protect the pawn, and attack the knight. So he has options. He actually can even go here and attack the knight and protect the pawn. So he has three choices how he can go about protecting both. I mean, protecting one and getting his queen out of danger. But taking this pawn, which looks, it is free candy, is a little bit risky because this free pawn, which is also a fork, is a little bit more valuable than this pawn way over here. But anyway, pressing on. Let's see what happens. So we get pawn takes pawn back. Now it's no longer free candy. Our free candy that was there is now gone. So we no longer have free candy. This one is not free. It's protected and attacked equal number of times. So white just dodged a bullet. White would have lost a pawn. It was a gambit, got back the pawn. Now they are equal in pawns, six to six. Black could have won a pawn. So black, even at the rating of 1523, missed the free candy and all the joys that go with it. All right. Black now develops the queen in blocking the bishop. Does that sound familiar? It's the exact same thing white had done, blocking the bishop. And so, again, not the greatest place that I'd want it to be developed, but at least there's no free candy being offered. Like no free candy being on. Um, white castles, but by the way, white could not do while the queen was there. So uh, black is allowing white to castle. White castles, still no free candy to be had. Uh, oops, I obviously missed free candy. So this move by black actually made this free candy. One attacker, two attacker, only one defender. Right? So black was going after this pawn wholeheartedly. White could have definitely protected the pawn. White could have moved here, here, or here to protect the pawn, or here to protect the pawn, here, or here. Or white could have probably done the best move possible for white at this time to pin the knight, making an absolute pin, which means this knight cannot protect the pawn, and be attacking that knight twice and only protected once. So a, the bishop here would have attacked, made this free candy, first of all, and would have made this no longer, this was free candy, it would have no longer been free candy. So that knight move, this bishop move, would have done a lot of things for white. Free candy, stop making this free candy, and now white can castle either side. All right, so let's see. Um, I do have a chat. Chat says, I like queen to e4, keeps the discovered check available. Um, so let's check that one out. So at which move are you liking queen to e4? I take it you mean now queen to e4? Oh, here. Yes. Um, so I'm not sure of the discovered check, though. Where is there a discovered check? That's where you mean. Um, and then with uh, there's, yes, e5. Thank you for checking that. You noticed the free candy. I did not. Okay, so again, a better move for um, white would have been pinning the knight, absolute pin, and definitely this would have been strong, right? All right. Uh, oh, on the queen e4, you say it's even before that? You prefer the queen e4? So maybe here now, queen e4? Is that what you're thinking? LLNP? Is that what you're thinking? I actually know who you are, but. We'll use your handle. Is this when you wanted the queen to e4? Preserving the discovered attack? I'm wondering about the lag between when I talk and you guys get to talk, uh, type. Black 2, free candy. Don't know what we mean if black 2 also. If black also free candy? So is this where we were thinking uh, queen to e4 keeps the discover check available? 
Oh, if black took free candy. Oh, here. Okay. So you're saying if black were to have taken here, like I recommended, you like queen to e4, protecting the knight. I mean, attacking the knight, protecting the pawn, and preserving the discovered attack from when this pawn takes, threatens to take. Because now the knight's under attack. Black has to do something. And depending on what black does. Okay, gotcha. Oh, and there's a 15 second delay. You know what? Um, I think that's actually a setting that I probably can change. I will have to change that. I think there's a three second delay, maybe, or a 10 second delay. I think I set it for three seconds, I think. All right, yeah, I can change that three second delay. Uh, remind me about that later. All right, so let's get back to the game though at hand. So we're back here to castle, still looking for free candy. We know that's free candy. And Black says, that's why I did all this. I took the free candy. Again, not talking about the fact that we've aligned our queen and our king and danger, 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 Will Robinson. Bad things might happen. Got to be careful. Got to be wary. Uh, but he took the, took the uh, candy. So this is a little premature, right? Why is this premature? Well, let's, let's see what happened when... When um, white, black took the free candy, what happened? This was threatened to lose the exchange. So it's interesting. This has been threatened to lose the exchange. Uh, otherwise, no, uh, nothing else. Oh, this is free candy. And this is not free candy. Okay. So with this move, we now find that this is free candy, but we're still threatening to lose the exchange here. So it's interesting, right? Free candy, threatening to lose the exchange. Uh, there is no... Uh, some more advanced things for those that are advanced. There's no pawn here available to attack the knight and no pawn here to attack the knight. Because the knight is pinned to the queen and then to the king. So this gives black the opportunity to actually protect this knight if he wanted to with a pawn. And that is what black does because black doesn't have to fear white pushing a pawn at him. Now, the other option would have been to say, well, I'll just take, white would have taken, have to, right? Can't take back the knight, loses the rook. And uh, hopefully black would develop a piece by taking back. And then white would have to take. And let's look at what the aftermath of this is. Black is still up a rook for a bishop. So we both have knights. We both have bishops. Both have one rook, and the last piece left is black has a rook, white has a bishop. So black is up two points already. Black is up two points. Five for three. Check your pawns. Black still has six pawns. White lost a pawn in this scenario. So now he's back down to have gambited a pawn. He only has five pawns. So that's one pawn better for black. So that's three points when we add them all up. Three points is the equivalent of having an extra bishop or an extra knight. Black would be winning this game easily. And why? Because all black had to do was look at the fact that he had that she had an exchange threat. And when she takes, yes, you take with check, but you're taking with the rook. Where we took your queen with a knight. So you only get a knight, we get a rook. So this is one of those where uh, the, the higher rate player, black, 1523, is still only 1523. And seeing this logic that black could have taken and gotten ahead was beyond her seeing at that time. Okay, that's just what it is. She's, it, it was too much for her to see at that moment, so she missed that availability. Okay, that was an opportunity. But that's why they're still not higher up. And these are the things that you're going to help me define what is grade school, remember preschool, grade school, and on. So preschool is where we don't see free candy. But what we're talking about here, where the winning, where taking with the exchange would have won the exchange, the rook for the bishop, where we would have realized, actually, rook for a knight, where if we would have realized that we would have gained two points plus a pawn, that calculation should have been done that, that would have been optimal, right? To do that calculation and be ahead. But it's, it's a level, it's probably junior high. So these two are in elementary school because they don't leave a lot of free candy. So they're in elementary school and they're missing, right? When the dust settles, they're, they're missing 
some stuff, and that stuff would make them elementary school in mind. All right, so here we are with the exchange option. Uh, black protects. The knight is no longer, no longer free candy, but the queen is now still threatened for the exchange. And white says, I really, really, really want to trade that queen. Gosh, I want to trade that queen. Uh, and again, black could take, and black actually does. I'm peeking ahead. So if black takes again, the question is, does black get ahead? Because right now we have the issue of we have two pieces attacking the queen. So we have to, again, you'd have to calculate and say, if I take here, if the knight takes, that's not so good because knight takes rook and we're up. If the rook takes, then bishop can take, knight could take back, knight could take back, and then we take, and we're still down the exchange. So it looks to me like there, he's still going to be down the exchange, and let's find out if that's true. So rook takes first for check, as we predicted. Knight takes back, and that could be because black wants to keep the bishop and not the knight. The reason I was saying that the bishop might take back first is because we didn't want to lose. Um, we, I didn't want the knight not to have a square to go to, but with this pawn move, the only square the knight would have had is here anyway. Now, of course, the knight is threatening a fork to win back the exchange, but the problem is black has to win a piece first, and he's running out of piece, pieces to grab. So he takes this one first, which means now black, again, if the bishop were here, then the bishop can go here uh, to try to stop, but that wouldn't really stop it. Why would just take? Uh, but the bishop could drop back here and protect the pawn and stop the exchange. The, the fork wouldn't stop losing a pawn because that would still be free candy. So this is now free candy. This is free candy, but it's, again, white just moved and missed the fact that this knight is sitting out here as free candy. So we just talked about, are we noticing free candy, right? So after the take, this is free, and this is attacked twice but protected many more times, three times. So this is only a threat of winning the exchange. All right. When we take the next move, the king, we don't bother about marking as free candy because you can't leave the king alone, right? Can't leave the king there. But this is still free candy. And this is free candy because we have three pieces, the king, the bishop, and the knight all attacking. So black takes the free candy and threatens the knight at the same time. So now the knight is free candy, and this knight is free candy, and white has to decide, do I trade and then this knight run away? Or do I take here and get the try to win the exchange? Because this is forced. This is a forcing move. All right, yes. White to knight to c7, check is the fork. Yes. And so now the king has to move, right? Only choice. And regardless of where the king moves, let's say we'll even... Them. Well, we don't want to throw him over here because then we get more checks with the bishop. Let's just let's just say for argument's sake he goes here. Then white again, free candy, free candy. White can say, well, I'm going to take the rook. Now take a look at the land. Uh, we have two bishops and a knight versus two bishops. I mean, two knights, a bishop, and a rook. So we're equal in material for the moment, and white also got this pawn. So white would be totally equal, and black can say, give me back my knight. I'm not going to give you my knight also. I'm going to block your bishop so I could try to maybe win your knight eventually. But now we're back to an equal game, equal in exactly equal in material. So again, what would, what would have been better for um, white instead of taking the pawn? White should realize this is free candy, and so is this. And more importantly, this is a fork with check. So if white had realized that, white would have said, I'm going to take this free candy, get the fork, and, and be in the game, and would have been equal. But instead, took the wrong piece, and black quickly said, thank you, I'll take that. I don't know if it was quick, actually. I haven't looked at the clock. So now it's two pieces to two pieces, but black is up a pawn. And threatening free candy. This is no longer free candy because the knight's protecting it. So um, black is threatening the knight up a pawn. And so black is doing a little bit better. All right. 
Black uh, White gets out of the free candy. That's always good. And we castle. And still no free candy anywhere. Ah, not free candy. Only attacked once. Protected once. Now, of course, that knight moves. We can get a second attacker, but that's not the point. This is also not free. Attacked once. All right, so what happens next? Uh, we push the bishop away. Now the bishop is free candy because that's one attacker. And we always do the x-ray with the diagonal um, for bishops and queens. So we have two attackers on one protector. And more importantly, even if it wasn't, even if this wasn't there, uh, this would be losing the exchange. So this is free candy, and that's the only free candy. The so black moves and says, no, you can't have free candy. White checks. So move the bishop twice. Again, we're not really uh, critiquing that part of the game right now, but there's no free candy anywhere. No up, oh, no free candy. It's protected by the knight. Still have no free candy. Bishop moves again. Uh, free candy. First time I've seen free candy in a while from these two. So um, black protects it because you only have so many options, and that's the only option black had left. I mean, white had left for that one. Black attacks the bishop, still not free candy. It's protected once, attacked once. And um, white chooses not to trade off the bishop, which was trapping the knight, I mean, the rook to the pawn. So it might have been better to trade it off. But in any case, it does a counterattack on the knight because if the knight moves, then the bishop is free candy. But the knight doesn't have to move. The bishop can take and therefore be check. And that's what we talked about. If you're under attack, if you're under attack, one of the options is to attack something of greater value, and black can be attacking the king. The so black can take a piece, attack the king, white would have to respond, and then the knight can move. And then black is still ahead because of the exchange. I said before that uh, they were kind of equal. They're not equal, of course. Black is up the exchange. Number of pieces, but way up because he's up the exchange. All right, so black is doing better. We take back, and now this knight gets to move. It's still free candy, but this knight gets to move and have a discovered attack. So this knight can go anywhere it wants, and this rook will say check. And if you look just a little bit carefully, there's no way to stop the check except to move the king. You could put the bishop in front, but then the rook will just take it. So there is no good way to stop this discovered check other than moving the king. So let's take a quick look at where this knight can go. And again, this is bonus, because at the very beginner level, I know they don't see all this. Uh, remember, discovered attacks is one of the things they see the least. But here's all the squares that I could go to. Can't go here, it's already occupied. So here and here, these would be just bad choices, right? Because the knight would just be taken off by the king or by the pawn. So the knight could go here and run away and attack this pawn, and then the king could come up and protect the pawn. So I wouldn't get anything of value there. I could go here and attack this pawn. Ha! With that check, the king moves, I'm going to win the pawn. That's, I feel confident I'm going to win that pawn. But can you see a problem? Um, if you go here first, right, and you have to be able to do this in your mind, if you go here first, the king can come here to attack, the knight would take, and then the king can come here to attack the knight, and the knight has no way to get away. So I'd lose my knight. All right, so actually, these all look bad so far. None of these look good. This one, I get nothing. I'm not attacking anything. I'm not doing anything from over here. This would be not a good idea. So I'm down to only one possible good move anyway. And thank goodness, because it's the best move. Because from here, the knight attacks the bishop, which the bishop is not protected, which would make it free candy as soon as I move here. And black can't, and white cannot respond to it be becoming free candy because the king has to move. So let's see if black found it. Black did. So we have the discover check, and we have new free candy. The good news for black, black is going to win another piece, and black does take the free candy. So now black is up. Two pieces, a rook and a knight, because he, with too much free candy, was left out. So again, threatening free candy. By the way, I, we're not going to go over why black shouldn't have moved the rook. The king could have moved the rook, got, tried to get some kind of counterplay. A rook goes on to the semi-open file, no free candy right now. Oh, another attack, 
offering again, chasing free candy. Rook moves again, this time creating free candy. At least this time we have a little bit of, um, of cover, a counter threat if we can get one going. And so that's always nice. Black sees that free candy, that long, remember I told you that beginning of the attacks, Black saw it. One of the four things he could do for the protected. And so White is continuing on with some semblance of an attack. Black says, nope, I'm getting out into the open file. And here White resigned. Too much, too much material, too powerful. Now, again, for my beginners, should he have resigned? No, he should play it out. You never know what'll happen. You might easily get stalemated. You might get a chance to get a pawn down there if black doesn't pay attention. It happens to all of us, all of us. So I prefer they not resign. All right, so that game was pretty interesting. Uh, had more free candy than I would have anticipated for this level. This one is on purpose because it's a gambited pawn. But then we, this this was interesting play. We did not take advantage of that free candy when it came about right now. Didn't take advantage. Uh, would have been able to, because as we said, and one of our chat said, likes this out of all the choices of how to protect the pawn and attack the knight. And of course, the knight could have went here, and it this is not free candy, but the knight would have then blocked the discovered attack. So if black take, white takes, black could just take back. So this would have been nice for black. Black would have been okay, and black would have grabbed another pawn. So right now, black is up a pawn, and white only has this isolated pawn. The queen is out pretty early, but positive for black, more pieces developed, right? As most of his pieces developed while Black has only one. And so easy attacks start to come to mind where problems can happen. This doesn't really work or solve all the problems uh, because you get things like check anyway, if you want. I mean, if you're in the, if you're in the um, sacrificing mood, why not go all the way? The queen comes up, you lose the rook. So then you're going to want the king to come up. And if the king comes up, we're in trouble. Big trouble. We block the bishop from the pawn. We take with the queen. We lose it. So this is not looking good for black. Black only has one square that makes any possible sense to try to survive. And now we get the knight into the game. Or we can castle for that beautiful discover check that we like so much with our rook. But if we want to keep playing, chase the king. So one of the things I teach my beginners, very early beginners, when they're not sure what to do, they could play chase the queen because it's so valuable, or if they could play chase the king because it's ultimately um, the most valuable, please do so, right? Take advantage of an opportunity to play chase the king. Want to play chase the king. In this case, the more we chase that king around, the more fun we'll have, and we're probably going to have a great chance to win the game. But we want to play chase the king if we can. Now, how to do it with the knight? Good questions. Here blocks the queen from getting back into the play. Uh, here, the queen can get to here. Bishop would not be protected, but it might be okay. You know, if you did something like this, you could go here. Problem with waiting too long, let's say we want to castle, because then we get this check in, and guess what happens? Nothing. We're still good, because black is trying to trade off the queens. But you have powerful, powerful, powerful discovered check. And so black cannot take the time to take your bishop. And next move, black loses the queen. So beautiful. I mean, yeah, maybe even have time to to um, pull in this position because it's just good things are happening. All right. So here, if the, if the king comes up, you can castle, we just said, is one option, especially because the king isn't back here to give him an easy runaway. Uh, the queen can come here and just say check. And if white says, well, I'll take that, we could say check with a castle move. And now we're down to one legal square. And we should be able to find checkmate here, right? If not immediately, quite soon. I'm not even looking hard and I'm thinking we're gonna find checkmate pretty soon. And I think there it is. So um, there's, there was a great opportunity. Yes, that queen there would have been very nice. Uh, Thank you, LMP. I totally agree. That would have been great. And 
for the most part, we're not really analyzing that part of the game yet. But yes, at the higher levels, so I'm going to assume that you're out of preschool, um, we, should, we should see those types of things and look for those types of things. All right, so that was a game between two better rated players, 13 and 1500. Uh, 13 essentially, uh, eventually losing the game um, because he was down too much material. So let's see what we have for a game we can look at. And we have one, oh, look at this. We have one between two really, in, in that tournament, in that tournament that we just had the team battle between my students and an, another club, we had the two highest rated players square off. Now, it's a bit of a disparity when I say highest rated, because the player we just saw that won that game was a young lady who was 15, 28. Right now, white in this game is 15, 57. We'll flip the board for fun. Uh, some people really like to see white at the bottom. Of it. So white is 1557 and gets revenge for that club because he's the highest rated player on that club. 1557 was the highest one to show up. And um, the other club, their highest rated player was 2088. Uh, big disparity. Over 500 points over 500 rating point difference. Now in USCF over the board, I know that a 100 point rating difference means that the higher rated player should win three out of four times. You play four games, on average, three out of four should go to the player that's 100 points higher. I don't even have a clue what it would be if you were 500 points higher, but the 2000 players should definitely have the large advantage in this game. Let's see if they have no free candy left on the board, right? If they don't give away free candy because these are high, I mean, 1557, we saw one just play and win. And now this one is playing 1557 again, but he's playing a 2000, almost 2100 rated player. Let's find out what happens. So we have a white, the 1500 playing an E4 opening. By the way, I will admit, white is one of my students. And uh, we'll see, because white, May even be in chat. In fact, I know white is. So, uh, last move. White threatened the pawn. Free candy for the moment. Black protects the pawn. No free candy, no free candy, no free candy. No free candy. And we have nice static, I mean, um, solid development. No rushing, no scared. Everybody's developing their pieces. Ah, we have our first non-center pawn, non-development. But there's, no, there's still no free candy. And why did white black do that? I mean, white do that probably to keep black from coming in here and doubling up on the pinned piece. Did he need to? No, the bishop's protecting it. The knight could protect it, but he chose it. Not a center pawn. I don't care. Uh, still no free candy, right? We're looking for no free candy. No free candy. No free candy. Look at that. So again, this is a move that you might say, what's that move? You know, keeps the knight out, but uh, there was no threat of the knight going there that it looks like, but maybe it's to be able to bring the bishop back and back and back. So maybe it's giving a hole for the bishop to stay on this diagonal, right? That's a possibility. Otherwise, you wonder why weaken your king's side without provocation. Uh, White did it, being shuttled the bishop. Okay, fair enough. So that move, again, if we were analyzing it at a higher level, I wouldn't have liked this move. I would, I would ask the reason why and, and get an explanation, hopefully. All right, we have our first, since the, since the second move of the game, our first threat of free candy. We have an attack, and, and uh, it's not even free candy. I'm, I'm not even right now. I'm still wrong. It is actually just threatening to win the exchange because the knight's protected. So we have our first threat, and it's for to win the exchange. So black, being 2,000 plus rated, runs away. Makes sense. I'm not going to um, give you that exchange. That makes total sense. But notice, white, black did not do this. Black is staying on this diagonal. And therefore, it's pretty odd because it's, again, why is this move here? Now, you might say, well, black was being really tricky and wanted to move the bishop here. And when the bishop went back here, black did not want the knight to gain a tempo to attack the bishop. Okay then the bishop should have stopped here, right? 
And then if the bishop stopped here, the queen could have a square to cat, uh, develop. Right now, the queen has no place to go, so the queen can't get developed. So this is stymieing black's own development. The queen has a hard time. This bishop can't go anywhere until something moves. This bishop can move, but it just got there. And the queen can't get out because this pawn can't move either. So remember, development, full development includes getting the queen off the back rank. And so right now, white is going to have the same kind of trouble. This bishop has trouble. The queen doesn't. Uh, but again, that's more advanced. Let's get back to free candy because there was none. Uh, none that lasted. White moves the piece. I'm not going to complain. It's not free candy. Ah, now black does this. Again, remember, if black had went here with the bishop and here with the queen, would have had the same threat, but the queen would have been off the back rank and the rooks would have been talking. But in either case, we have another threat of free candy. Because of the queen x-raying through the bishop, we have two pieces attacking, only one protecting. And white says, hey, I'm 15, 57. I'm good enough to know what to do. I'm protecting that pawn a second time. It's no longer free candy. Remember, every time we've seen free candy be threatened, never offered, threatened, the opposing player has said, nope, we're not going to allow the free candy. So still no free candy, still no free candy. This is a discovered attack, right? The knight now has a home, uh, but it's giving a discovered attack. But there is a pawn protecting it, so it's not free candy. But white can maybe do things about it, like moving here to protect the knight. By the way, I don't, I don't like to look ahead when I'm analyzing the game with you because that's kind of cheating in my mind. I like to just tell you what I think is a good move, and then we'll see if they do it. So white, more power to him, is being aggressive and saying, you know what, I know I could have put my knight here, but then, you know, that pawn might come and my knight wouldn't have any, play. I could go, I don't like it. Um, I'd be leaving my piece hanging. It would be really bad. I'm going to be aggressive and go for this. I can't really complain, right? I mean, that's, I mean, we're, we're being aggressive. So is this pawn free? Now it's attacked once, protected once. Is this pawn free? Attacked once, protected twice. All right. Now the only, well, no, that's not true. It's protected twice. So it is protected twice. So we're good. All right. So black set, white says, I'm opening up my king. I already opened up my king. I'm going all the way in for a dollar, in for a pound, in for an ounce, in for a pound or something like that. So Black says, well, let's get rid of that knight. This is not free candy, but this is now. And we probably want to take back. And White takes back. And so now there's still no free candy. This is amazing how long we go without any free candy. This is a trade. So I became free candy for the second. And White did not miss a beat. Made sure he took the free offered candy. And then Black says, ah, spying free candy again. There is free candy to be had. So what does white do? Does white notice the free candy? And what does white do about it? White uh, ignores the free candy. But white is trying to get some really interesting threats going. I think white is thinking he's got the upper hand on the tactics. But I'm curious. Why not take the free candy, right? This is, And this is a 2,000 player missing this free candy. Now, 2,000, so maybe know something I don't. Maybe he sees some way that black is going to get a devastating attack, uh, but I don't get it. Uh, the rook comes here trying to attack. The bishop could just take it off. Um, these pieces are not, not in the game yet. Uh, this knight can't take the time to move because the rook is under attack, and the knight can always hop right back to where it was if the rook goes someplace like here and threatens it. Uh, the knight could just go back and threaten him again, by the way. Black can even take off the bishop and figure, you know what? I'll get rid of that. I'm up a pawn. I'll get rid of that exchange. White's uh, king side is decimated, and I'll take another pawn. And his pieces are develop are out on the board, but they're not well coordinated. This rook isn't over here helping. The bishop's in the way. The knight isn't well placed. This bishop is hitting on nothing. And even the queen just got buried behind the bishop. And yes, we're hoping for this attack later, but. I think black's winning. So based on that simple analysis, again, maybe somebody can point out that I'm missing some stuff. Remember, I'm not a master. <laughs> I am 
2000-ish. But yeah, this makes no sense. Why, why black would not take the free candy is beyond me. So white didn't protect the free candy and had multiple ways to do it, um, including just moving the knight because the queen would have been um, hitting it. Uh, moving the queen, and again, uh, maybe LLMP, who actually played this game, might tell me that he, which of the choices he likes, but he, uh, the queen could have went here, the knight could have went here, the knight could have went here, didn't even have to go here, and doesn't, didn't have to. Um, could have went here with the bishop, leaving the queen here to come out here later. Uh, multiple ways to protect that pawn and still keep momentum moving forward. So I, I think black, even though 2000 just missed free candy. All right, so rather than take the free candy, black is aggressive himself. Black had the more solid king side and he's opening it up. So we're attacking here. Well, that's one attacker and we have one, two, three, four defenders. So that's not really a threat, right? So the threat might be to take. And when we take back, this rook would be hanging, but we have time, we can trade rooks, so we're not worried about that. This is still the free candy that I'm worried about. Let's see if white notices. I don't know if white noticed, but white played as if white noticed. White said, I can protect it or I can move it, and white moved it. So nice gaining a little bit of a tempo, although the knight can still come here, but then the knight has no squares to run to, right? Remember, we just talked about that. So if the knight comes here and we go here, the best black has now is to trade off rooks. I mean, trade off the knight for. I uh, could take here though, right? We have time to take there, but then things are opening up, and um, white is actually faring all right. So I don't know what actually happened. So let's find out. <laughs> that is what black did, and that is what white did. I like being predictive. All right. Uh, LMP says he missed this pawn was hanging that at that time. Thank you for your honesty. Uh, this is what I just analyzed for you, and this is what happened. I love it when my my students at least play moves that I, I predict they should make. It always makes me feel good. Um, by the way, white is my student. Uh, the other one is not, but here we go. We said he only had one good square, and he trades the, the bishop with the knight. Bad part for black, you're giving up your good knight that was doing good work, but you, instead of you know, retreating him and using him again in the future. Uh, we didn't steal a pawn, and we ended up now giving him away for a piece that wasn't even developed. That bishop had never moved, and that black knight went through a lot of work, trades itself off for a piece that never moved. That's, I mean, everything else being equal, that knight traveled through this circuit to trade it off for a piece that hadn't moved. Now, again, the bishop might have been powerful later, but right now, simple answer, traded it for a piece that never moved. All right, but it's uh, not free candy, no free candy. There's still no free candy here. We have a weakness, double pawns. We have a king that's out in the open, but still no free candy. And we don't have a black bishop to worry about. Anyway, takes, takes, another trade, and we get to this position, and we still, we have our, another threat of free candy. Queen says, I'm threatening free candy. Now notice that if the queen were here and the bishop were here, that queen could have slid here, the rook could have slid behind him, but because the queen never got off the back rank, still hasn't, by the way, uh, this rook is stymied. The, the problem with the queen not getting off the back rank isn't the queen, it's the rook that he's keeping from getting into play. Again, bonus, sorry. Uh, again, I'm trying to keep it at the beginner, beginner, beginner level. So, White says, nope, not free candy anymore. I protected it. By the way, you always remember, discovered attack on the queen is possible, so you got to be aware. Ah, black comes in and says, free candy, and it's a fork, right? So we are attacking the king and the free candy. So black is threatening to win free candy. Uh, how can white stop that free candy? There's only one move, right? The queen here stops this pawn from falling, no longer free candy. Only move possible. White finds it and says, you can't have free candy. You can't even have my double pawns. We're not going there, buddy. Black finally gets this rook to have freedom and comes over and grabs a square. All right, no, that's not bad, we're in there. So what do we have to do? Do we have to do anything? This queen still can't take, protected. 
Queen can't take, it's protected. Queen can't take, it's protected twice. So as of this moment, um, you know, black could take here. So if we take, then we take here, but that's not a good enough trade. Uh, definitely not a good enough trade, a rook and a knight for the queen. It's not a good trade at this point in the game. So what does uh, white do? White has to try to decide how he wants to play this out further because he's not hurting, but he doesn't really have a lot of good things to do, so he trades. And a trade better than free candy. So now the rook is here threatening free candy again. So white, yes, white has to do what he has to do, which is to protect the free candy simultaneously attacking the rook. So remember what you could do. You can't take the king. So I can run away. I can protect it. I can put something in between. Can't put anything in between a king and a piece that it's attacking because the king only attacks one square at a time or one distance. So I can run away or I can't take the piece so I can run away. I don't, you know, we can protect it, right? So the only way to possibly protect it is this and this doesn't work. White just takes, and then you could say, But yeah, I he, but then you could take you sack the knight and win the rook, so that's not good for um for black, right? I mean, we don't, we don't want to lose the exchange, so really, he has no he can't do that. He's a 2000 rated player, he runs away, he does what he should, he runs away. Um, white starts pushing pawns. Now this again, um, if, and I'll work with him later because he's my student, but later um, we'll talk about what he should do in this situation. Uh, and it's probably not pushing these pawns. Um, and if he pushes them, he wants them all on white, not just one. But really what he probably needs to do is get this knight more active, get him into the game. Uh, he's not hitting on any good squares here at all. So he can reposition his knight here to bring it up here. He can reposition his knight here to bring it up here and to protect the bishop. And by moving the knight, he sets himself up for discovered attack later, which might win him a rook. So if he, if he sees that, if he moves his knight almost anywhere, not blocking, right? Moves his knight here, threatening to come here. Let's say black does it just a bad move, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start attacking the pawns. Again, black is 22,000, so he shouldn't. But then you get this discovered attack. The bishop in front, you just take it off. The rook in front, you just take it off. The king has to move. And, um, oh, we can't take us. Right. But anyway, I would still trade it. I would still trade it down and then take off. But ah, got the dog on knight. Would have loved the knight not to be there for checkmate and for winning the rook. Anyway, back to the game. Enough of a side note. So the pawns here, great if we're going to do um, get all of our pawns. But Black, being a 2,000 rated player, you know, he might have found this kind of a move, which is annoying because if you take, it's doubling up your pawns. Um, might not be good. Might not, might, might be. But I wasn't crazy about this move also because I just find he's, he's pushing these pawns a little prematurely. Everything is equal. Uh, but... Black helps out, as happens a lot of times. Your opponent helps you improve your position. Um, Black moves his knight, tries to get his knight to be active. We get to trade the knight, and now we do have a discovered attack. We could do this, check. King would have to move, can't move here. King would have to move somewhere else, and then we could take, pawn take back, and then we have the king against the pawns and the bishop. Uh, we, we have pretty interesting situation. In fact, we want a pawn. So check, let's just put it here for argument's sake. We win this pawn. And at this point in the game, that pawn may, may be enough to win. Don't know, um, but it might be enough to win. Okay, so there was a chance for a discovered attack and, and trading off the rooks, and that might've been better for white. So now we go here. If we're not gonna do the discovered attack, uh, this pawn move probably would have been better. Because if we're not gonna do the discovered attack, we want to put all our pawns on the same color as our opponent's bishop to, to limit his movement. But unfortunately, we don't have the free candy because our rook is hanging. And that's where white hopefully could have seen, oh, I throw a check in first, I can get the free candy. By the way, the answer might have come, well, what happens if he does this? And he loses the bishop most likely. And he could take here, 
but then you can keep your rook for the bishop. And yeah, you're going to lose a pawn, but the rook is definitely better than a bishop in, in this point in the end. Definitely better. Um, so that would not work out well for black. Anyway. So um, back to here, we do get the move in. And I thought, you know, when I was watching this game, if black took, we, we're going to finally get that trade anyway, but we don't. So we move along, move along. And now we get into end game play. And um, black is not playing like a 2000 as far as the end game go. And so that tells me something else that you could be 2000 and not be good at end games. Because there's no way that you're going to get me in my end game to trade off um, and fix your doubled pawns. Your worst, your worst pawns in the game, your worst part of the game is these double pawns. I'm going to do everything I can not to trade off those double pawns. I don't know what, but I'm going to do everything. There's no way I want you to have fix your double pawns. So maybe the bishop here, maybe the bishop here. Um, I, I don't want you to get rid of your double pawns. But white allows them to get rid of the double pawns. The king holds all these squares, the rook holds this square, this rook can't go here, so this rook has no scope. So right now, in my opinion, black is losing the end game. I haven't even looked harder, um, but I think black's losing the end game. Black push could trade because this pawn is still going to keep everything out. Uh, trade, white chooses not to trade and to lock up the position, that's okay. And then we get this move. And this move threatens things like this, but so what? Um, to me, black has this position quite, I mean, white has a position nicely set up for himself. The rook can come up and force a trade even, and this should be a drawing game easily uh, for both sides, right? We have equal number of pawns, rook against rook. There's no dynamics. This should be a drawing game. Uh, but then we do, you know, and then I see also that we're not, any of us are good at end games. Um, and we get into this kind of situation. We have a passer being formed, but we also have a pass pawn here. So we have two pass pawns, a rook pawn against a C pawn. And so the game is, is got dynamic. We attack the pawn, free candy, by the way. And white normally would say, then I'll just protect the pawn from behind and I'll start marching all the way down and see if you could stop me, right? Basic play. The other option is to come here and attack these two weak pawns. But normally you'd start marching this pawn down and when that king had to hurry to get all the way over here, the rook had to drop back and try to stop you, then you might come up and uh, look for these pawns and you might get your king over here to stop this guy. Anyway, but we get this, uh, an immediate push, and then uh, black says, nope, I can't let it go too far. And we get this situation here where this pawn is gonna fall. There's no way for black to protect that pawn. So black says, I'll just take this one. White takes that one. And we push. White can immediately say, nope, I'm going to stop that push. But white says, nope, I'm going to grab this pawn. So what should black have done? Black should have come over and put the king, rook behind the pawn again, if he knows end games, and start pushing the pawn. And this pawn is going to have trouble because the king can come back. And it would have been an interesting end game because white now also will have these pawns. But black, white has to try to stop this pawn, and that pawn can move pretty fast. But black took this pawn, said, nope, I'm, I'm gonna get rid of that potentially passed pawn, and allowed white to now attack his pawn. We get a check, have to back up, and we get pushing of the pawn. And white is playing this pretty well. It took him a lot of time. He really took his time to look through it, but he's playing fine. White says, I'm going to take off the pawn, not going to let you push it one more time and be protected by the rook. And I have time to do that. Why? Uh, why? Because you get to go here. Okay. Uh, oh, you saw the discovered attack was protected by the pawn on g7. Um, you saw the discovered attack, um, but the rook was protected by the pawn on g7. Oh, that was a long time ago. Okay, yes, yes, the pawn, yes, yes, on um, the here. And I, I still say you could have just taken and been fine. But anyway, that was a while ago. Uh, so the rook can come here and say check. So you might be afraid of taking check, but the king actually can come back and protect the rook. If that was one more over, you'd lose the rook. So the question is, do I protect the pawn? Because I can't, right? If I protect the pawn, I push. 
And then if I do something else, he takes the pawn anyway because I, I can't let him push. So I'm still going to lose this pawn anyway is what white's figuring. A white could have tried this move though, and it would have been pretty interesting to see what black does. But remember, if black does something like this, now he's threatening if you take the pawn, but white doesn't have to allow it. White can go here, and now the black rook has no more threats, and the black rook has to go somewhere else, and the only place to protect the pawn is blocking the pawn. So either has to go here, which doesn't work very well for him, or he had to run away. Um, so he's, And if he runs away, he just loses the pawn. So again, end game play is important at all levels, um, but even for these these two, 2000 versus 1557, that king could have just went here, and that would have been a better move. All right, so white took, traded off, and white now went for this pawn. Interesting choice versus going um, here, but again, right, it's, it's playable, and it should still be a draw. It's two pawns. So white comes over and threatens the rook. The rook threatens the pawn, and white threatens the king. Says, I'm going to get in here sooner or later. King comes down, threatens the king. So this game should be a draw. The 1,500 rated player is lower on time. He's down to 1 minute and 13 seconds versus 8 minutes and 47 seconds. There is a 5-second increment. So now we are at the point where um, white says could say, draw is fine by me. That's a rook pawn. Even if we traded off rooks, even if I won his pawn, the king just has to be in the corner. I'm not going to get a win. This should be a draw. And you could have went draw by repetition. But white says, nah, I'm not going to take a draw. One more time would have been threefold repetition. But instead, white says, I have an idea that might work. I'm going to push the pawn. Again, I think he should have just took the draw. But it turns out he was right. He ends up winning this game somehow. So we have a check. And then we have the push of the pawn. We have a check. And we have a really weird move. Really weird. Uh, 2,000 plus rated player with eight minutes left on the clock. His opponent has less than a minute. And he moves away from his own pawn and moves away from the pawn that's threatening to queen. Very strange. Very strange. So we get another check, and it continues to move away from his pawn. And so now white can protect and attack at the same time. Not that it matters, because it should still be a draw. But don't understand why black took all the time. And now it's almost as if white says, yeah, you're right, it's a draw. Okay, I'll, I'll take the pawn, and now it's a draw. This should be a draw. And they play on. I don't know if anyone offered a draw. Um, it looks like black did offer draw, and white declined it at some point. Um, I see that in the notes, but unfortunately the notes don't tell me when. So um, LLMP, you might have to tell us when that offer came. So they go for jockeying for position, and you would think the 2,000 rated play would, you know, be able to play this without a problem. By the way, you say, oh, it's, it's under time pressure. Okay, black has eight and a half minutes. White has one minute. Remember the five second increment, so he's up to one minute. He has one minute. He just attacked free candy. Black didn't pre move. Now it should be an easy win for white. All right, so at the end of the game, we have free candy missed by a 2000 rated player. Besides any other free candy we noticed, here's free candy being missed by the 2000 rated player. All, all black had to do here. Let's take the rook, and you have the draw that he had offered. But instead, he moves the king, inexplicably loses that piece. Now, um, white should hopefully start restricting black's movement, either here and restrict movement, or, you know, either, I mean, sorry, not there. Here or here, and start restricting black's movement. So he restricts black's movement. Black comes forward, and, you, and so white should say, it's fine. You're going to stay on this for a second. Or he could go this way and stay, stay on this row. And he did. He went up there. And black says, nope. And then we get weird moves. So white, white, white should just stall him because on the opposite, then we can start marching him to the end of the board. But white goes on the wrong side of the king, and we get more strangeness. But 
black gets closer to an edge. So white's made some adv advance and it's like, ah, white now remembers what to do and then he forgot. So here um, we don't want to make the opposition. We want to let black do it. So white could just run to the other side of his king. That way black can never cross without getting forced back. But white forgets and we almost have threefold repetition again, it feels like. And this time white does remember the technique and the rest should be elementary. Uh, by the way, here a little bit faster. Again, it's just to go up straight, not on go at him, but taking the opposition here, Rook is on the correct side. So now he just needs to stall a move and he does. And now we chase the king. When the king comes back, we move him off. And now, see that time white did it correctly. We get the little march and the only chance black had, stall and we're going to get checkmate. Outstanding finish on the end game, although um, took a little time to find remember the technique. But all in all, an interesting game. There was even free candy left between the 15 and the 2000, but a lot less free candy than we saw in the first game between the uh, 1500 and the 1300. There was more free candy left there, uh, but still free candy. So it's it's a ailment that can afflict you all the way up to 2000. But I assume it's a whole lot less the stronger you are. Any other questions before we sign off? I think that was an interesting uh, use of the uh, uh, view of the free candy. And we have one more day of free candy. I like to do a topic for the week for our three streams in a row. And so what I'm thinking on Friday is maybe we'll play a game or have two other people play a game. And while they're playing, we could be identifying any free candy that we see and see if they notice the free candy, but they can't hear us, of course. No stream sniping, as it's called. All right, well, thank you for attending. I hope I didn't miss any chats this time. I do, at least I am now visible, I can see the chats and you can see your chats also. Let me know if you like seeing your chats in the window, if I should just remove that. I noticed that my fat cat is in the way. I noticed the chess cat, not the fat cat but I can move that window up and move my cat down so he won't be in the way as much. It's actually she, but it's okay. And um, I do run the Niles District Library Chess Club. Out of uh, Lee Chess, we also have a team, Niles District Library Chess Club. It's mostly for kids. So if you want to join our team, you can, but you're going to have to give me some personal information. Look at the description for the team and you'll be able to see what all that is. All right, there are no other questions. We'll all see you next time. Have a gr oh, Merry Christmas. It's two days away. And we'll see you on Christmas if you show up.